Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun DIY crafts coming your way today. Why do I always forget what I'm going to say? I say the same line like 20 times. What are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we'll be working on some farmhouse style home decor crafts. So let's get started with project number one. For this project, I'm going to be working with this cutting board I picked up at Hobby Lobby in their spring section. It was 40% off, so I got it around $2, but we all know Dollar Tree has cutting boards, Walmart, that kind of thing, so whatever works for you. For our paint today, I'll be using chalk paint, Debbie's Design Diary Little Black Dress, White Swan. First thing we're going to do is I want to mark off about 3 inches up from the bottom because I want to kind of do a top one color and a bottom one color. So mark that and I'm just going to tape it off with some frog tape or painter's tape. And then I'm going to um, paint the top in black. And I actually, like, later on I'm like, wait, something's weird here. I was going to do it opposite. I was going to paint the top in white and the bottom in black, but I did it opposite. But that's okay because it still looks cute, but, you know, you wanted to hear that story. <laughs> Before I move on to painting the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and trace the top portion just down to where I painted onto a piece of uh, black cardstock here. And then I'm going to come in about a quarter inch in and I'm going to redraw a new pattern line. And I am sorry for my voice, y'all. I have a head cold. If it bothers you too much or it's not beautiful to your ears, you know, I'll be okay if you mute it, <laughs> if you mute me. Um, anyway, so once I make that new pattern perimeter there, I'm going to cut that out. And I do this so those of you new that my channel, so when I put this down onto our cutting board here, you'll be able to see a little bit of that painted perimeter around it because otherwise, you know, as I always say, what did we paint it for if we're not going to see a little bit of it? And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the bottom portion here. Come in about a quarter inch and redraw that new pattern line. And you don't have to do this. Uh, you don't even have to cover it with paper if you don't want it. You can just keep it all paint. Either way works. I went back and forth on it, but you all know I usually put some kind of paper somewhere on my project. Um, I just think it gives it a little something more sometimes, even though I love just the painted distress look. Here's what both will look like with a little bit of perimeter around them. And now we're going to go ahead and add a fresh piece of tape at the top of that black paint line so that we can paint the bottom in white and then off camera I will go ahead and paint the whole back side in black so it's all finished off. We'll pull the paint tape off because that's the pretty we want to see and then I've got some hearts here these are heart tuckums they come in a set of 12 they're mini ones I'll have a link down below to craftingwithkimber.com because I'm going to use these as well as some other hearts from her shop today and then I'm going to come in with my paper I love to take my paper to the sewing machine and give it a little bit of a country uh, look to it just really subtle and I'm sewing with white thread on our black piece of paper and then on the white piece of paper I'll sew with black thread so it's kind of the opposite you know of course on both ends but it all ties in together and here we're coming in on the white piece of paper here both just uh, textured cardstock is what I'm using here I just love to do this and if you're not a sewer you know don't worry about it if you want a sewing look you can take a fine point uh, sharpie marker and make little dash lines I do like to do this though however is open my scissors and take the open end of that scissor blades and scrape it along the edges of my papers to give it a little bit of a rustic look to uh, the paper edges and it also helps the paper to kind of stand up off of that board a little bit it gives a little definition between the paper and the board itself all right off camera I'm gonna go ahead and sand everything with my electric sander and this is what it looks like just a little bit of light distressing all the way around I did the back side as well. And now I'm gonna come in with a vinyl quote I created. I will have printables down below for all my projects today. This is the only one though, however, that will be a PDF and a PNG. The PNG for those of you electronic cutting machines, you do have to clean out the background and the insides of the letters. I went ahead and did this one since it had a little bit of a design element to it. Those of you without cutting machines, you can take the PDF and you can download it and then print it onto your cardstock first and then cut your cardstock out to fit your cutting board. Okay. The rest of my uh, 
PDFs today. I didn't make PNGs out of them because those of you with electronic cutting machines, it will be seriously faster for you to just type it out than sit and try and clean out all the letters and stuff. You'll see what I'm seeing when we get to it. Going to go ahead and glue everything down. I know my sewing on the back here looks funny, doesn't it? Um, something wasn't threaded right in my machine, but it looks okay enough on the front to go with it. So gluing both of these pieces down, and then I'm going to come in with just a little hot glue and some greenery at the top right at kind of the bottom of that handle. Just really light here. I didn't want a whole lot going on because I love the quote itself. And then I'm gonna add some uh, ribbon here I got from Walmart, just some gross grain ribbon. I'm gonna add in that little red heart down at the bottom of that quote. And then last minute I decided I wanted to add some splatter. So I took that white swan chalk paint, mixed it with some water in a small paintbrush, and I'm using stuff to kind of cover my ribbon here. And I wipe off the excess and then I tap my fan brush here to get little bits of splatter. And that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number two. Now for this project, I am going to use this frame. I found it at a thrift store for a couple of dollars. I like the wood frame around it. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of take it apart, take all the paper and stuff off of the back. And I'm gonna take the thick mat board out of it and the glass. We're just gonna use it for the frame. I am gonna keep the little holders in though because I can use that in a minute and if you don't have wood I'm going to cut a piece of wood out or have my husband cut it out you can reuse like the mat board that's in there or cut a piece of foam board or a thick piece of cardboard uh, anything like that will work so here's my board cut to fit the inside I'm going to use this wood homeward from Walmart and uh, some more of these mini hearts and some more Debbie's design diary little black dress chalk paint some Waverly wax mixed with water and some Dixie Belle chalk paint and rustic red and I'm going to use that rustic red to paint three of these little mini hearts again these come in a set of 12 craftingwithkimber.com and they're only like a dollar for a set of 12 and then I use larger heart on our last project and those are like a set of four for like a dollar fifty I think painted that in red and I'm going to come in with the Waverly antique wax I've got it mixed with water I kept the old jar of my Waverly wax and then I pour in from the new jar of the Waverly wax and pour water in it so I've always got a mixed uh, Waverly wax I don't like it full strength just painting that of course and then I'm going to come in with the Debbie's design diary a little black dress paint and I'm gonna paint just around the perimeter of the front of this board and then I'm gonna paint the frame around the edges not worried I'll paint a little bit around the back side of the frame about a quarter inch around the perimeter but not worried about the rest of it because I will cover that up make it look all finished off and then once the paints all dry off camera, I'll go ahead and use my electric sander to stress everything. Here's the back. You can see how I painted around the edges. I've went ahead and glued the board in, put the prongs down, and I've cut my cardstock to cover the back. We'll glue that on later. And then I cut a piece of scrapbook paper to fit the front. Um, you can't find the pad of paper where this came from anymore, but the brand I most often buy online or in stores is Prima Marketing Inc. I love their paper and the quality of it in that. So, uh, you know, if you wanted to Google that and look it up, Prima Marketing Inc. is the brand of paper I most often buy. I get that question asked a lot. Here's what my paper looks like when it's all sewn. And I'm going to come in with the open end of my scissor blades and distress along the edges and get that ready. And then for my quote, I've cut out in vinyl and part of it 
is that wood word I'm going to use home is going to go at the top. You look in the lower right corner there, that's going to be your PDF. I've included the home word in case you don't have a wood word home or can't find that at Walmart. You can just print all that out onto your cardstock. Again, I did not do a PNG on this. It'll take you much quicker to just type it out. I will have all the fonts listed down below for those of you with cutting machines. Instead of you just going in there and trying to clean it up, you could type it up in like two minutes. It's really easy. Anyway, getting my vinyl on the bottom here, um, going nice and slow. A lot of people ask, how do you get your paper not to rip? I just go nice and slow back and forth. And if it feels like it's maybe going to catch, I kind of stop and just wiggle a little bit more and then pull it up a little bit more, if you know what I mean. I don't just rip it off in one fashion because that can rip the paper. Now we're gluing on our homeward. I'm just going to make sure I've got it all centered where I want it to be. And then we'll go ahead and glue this entire piece into the center of our frame. And then I'm going to come in. You can see I've got everything covered up because, again, last minute I decided I wanted to add some splatters. Now, of course, I thought a little bit might get on the frame, but maybe I'll be lucky and it won't. But it did. So once I splattered the front, I'm like, okay, well, I'll just add a tiny bit of splatter here and there in the frame to make it look intentional. But not all over because it would be too much. <laughs> and then I'm going to come in with those three little mini hearts, and I'm going to go ahead and glue those onto our project as well. Just three of them centered right underneath the home word. I think it looks really cute. I like how it turned out. And then we're going to come in and glue that cardstock on at the back so it finishes it off. And then that makes this project complete. Let's move on to our last project, number three. Now for this project, I found two of these rectangular short canvases and then one long canvas from a thrift store. If you're at a thrift store, feel around if you see these canvases because you could feel if they might have a cool frame underneath them. Um, and then if, you know, I know Walmart carries rectangular uh, canvas boards and then Dollar Tree has regular canvas boards. So whatever you, you know, can find for this project. And then here's my long one. I went ahead and took all the canvas off and the staples out of it. And this measures about 24 inches long, you know, frame edge to frame edge and about eight inches tall. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I had my husband cut a piece of board for the back. Again, you could use like foam board or cardboard for the back side or a big piece of heavyweight like mat board from a framing store, something like that to make this work. And I'm gonna use Waverly Wax mixed with water and then uh, Debbie's Design Diary DIY Chalk Paint Gravel Road and White Swan. And first thing I'm gonna do is mark the inside of the frame onto my board. I taped it down first so it wouldn't move. And then I'm going to come along the edges and just tape that off because once I get everything uh, done, I'm going to wood glue my boards together. So I want to make sure I kind of have raw wood to raw wood for better adhesion. And then I'm going to come on the same thing on the back of the frame and I'm going to tape that off as well. Yes, Walmart has rectangular frames. I think they're like 7 by 14 inches, I believe. Uh, I bought them there all the time before, so that's an option to buy. But definitely when you're in a thrift store, check out any canvas prints because they're usually pretty cheap and just feel around it to see if you can feel how the frame feels inside because a lot of times you get a pretty cool looking frame like this one. This longer one, I I think was like three dollars and the two shorter ones were like two dollars i'll be using that short one in an upcoming video again i just love the frames on these okay so once that's all stained and drying i'm coming down onto the main board with 
uh, two coats of this gravel road chalk paint. What's really cool about this chalk paint is most paint, when it dries, it dries darker, but this actually dries lighter. I don't know the process of that, but it's pretty cool. So two coats of that. And then once that's dry, uh, you can see how much lighter it is now. I'm going to come in with two coats of the white swan over the top of that. And then once all that paint's dry, again, off camera, I'll just use my electric sander. I did a 220 grit sandpaper and distressed it all. You can see here what it looks like, just so a little bit of that gray pops through. And then we'll go ahead and peel our tape off around the edges of this and, then of course, around the frame. I really like how this one turned out. And you can see how there's unpainted on the frame there, so it gives us that area for gluing. And this is what it'll look like all put together. I think that's going to look really cool. So here's what I printed out on my uh, Cricut machine. All right, I'll have the fonts listed down below. So I gave you an 8x10 PDF in case you got like, you know, an 8.5x11 size canvas. Then I gave you a four and a half by six and a half PDF in case you get like a five by seven canvas at Dollar Tree or Walmart. And then this is like a 3.75 by 9.25 PDF. So if you want to get like the seven uh, by 14 rectangular one at Walmart, I just gave you some options. And then I also printed this separately uh, on my Cricut machine because I'm going to lay down this first. And again, no PNG. Do you know how long? You all know that electronic cutting machines would be taking you forever trying to clean this out. The fonts will be there so you can just type it out yourself. And if you type it out exactly how I have it here, you don't have to do any type of uh, finagling with uh, trying to make everything look all squared off on the edges. See how the quotes all squared on the edges? And I got this idea off Pinterest, and I just started typing it exactly how they had it, where they had the cuts and the breaks with the wording and with the words and stuff, and it just came out like totally perfect. So I didn't have to mess with any spacing to get it all squared at the right and left edges if that's understandable. So if you just kind of type exactly how I have it and where the word breaks are, then it should come out nice and square all the way around okay once I get that on here and I did my this vinyl it's a, a gray color vinyl here I'm just using my little roller here and make sure I've got that nice and good on my board and then I'm going to come over the top with my cursive word roll that on and then peel that off and those of you with the pdf it's all one image but the background will be gray and then the choose joy on the top is in a black for you okay but again, three different sizes. So if you have, um, you know, trouble finding or want different sizes with your canvas, I tried to just give you some options because I know we don't always have the same size stuff everywhere that we're using. Once that's done, I'm taking heart from craftingwithkimber.com. Again, these come in a set of four. I'm just doing the second coat. I realized I wasn't filming the first coat on here. So second coat on there, that rustic red like I used earlier, heat dry with my heat tool and then sand it to distress it. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue this on right in the center here. I think it just kind of makes this pop. And then I'm going to use some wood glue here. I like to use a paintbrush to paint it on because it's so hard later because the wood glue goes up into that cap. And then if you let it dry in that cap, you can't get the wood glue to come out. So I just pour it on and then use a paintbrush because <laughs> it's easier. And then I will put my frame on to this and I'll go ahead and clamp it off camera. You can see I stained the back as well of everything so it's all finished off. And then that makes this project complete. So I hope you enjoyed all the projects that I have here for you today. I just love coming into this time of year and working on just some regular farmhouse decor. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite. Please give this video a thumbs up so it really, really helps my channel to grow. If you wandered in here for the first time and you're just checking things out and you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Again, sorry about my voice today, y'all. Hopefully next video, it'll be a little bit more uh, soothing to your ears. <laughs> before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Who do you see when you look at yourself? A dreamer? An entrepreneur? A mom? a sibling, a fighter, an activist, maybe simply just a retired human. <laughs> no matter your age, do you see yourself as hopeful and wanting all that life has to offer? Or do you feel older, washed up, nothing left, just waiting for Jesus to take you home? No matter what life has to offer you in this moment,
that you are in, and no matter what anybody tells you, you do matter. Your soul matters. What you think and say and feel matters. What dreams that you have for your life matters. You should always be hopeful for what comes next. You must never think you're stuck in a life that offers nothing but the mundane. You are useful. You're always useful at any age, and God has you exactly where He wants you. He will always think you are important, and He cares for all of you. You may think that you are messy or that your life is messy or that you're broken and beyond repair, but God loves the very beauty of what He made you to be. You are the beautiful story that God created with the deep emotion of love in His heart. Now, you may feel weird and weird-minded or wild and wildly unlovable, maybe even deeply rooted in a bunch of scattered thoughts of nothingness that doesn't ever seem sensible to your own thoughts and that maybe nothing will ever work out right in your life, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus has you all figured out. He knows your most inner thoughts and loves all the things that you think you're a failure at, and He loves all the things that you think He doesn't love, and He certainly knows everything in your life will work out according to His plan. You must always trust in the timing of what God is preparing for you. Always trust in the story that He continues to write for you. He is the author of your faith. He believes in the beauty of your heart, and He thinks you are the most gorgeous soul He has ever made. You see, God never makes mistakes, so never feel you aren't good enough or perfect enough or you're too old to do anything good and meaningful in your life for God because He loves every single part of you. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye!